is the Magpul P-Mag. It has become one of America's favorite polymer magazines. They're inexpensive, reliable, and make a perfect palette, perfect palette, for designs like this. So I bet you want to know the step-by-step -step process I took to create these awesome pee bags. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's do this. So first off, you're going to need some pee mags. Today's pee mags are brought to you by AIM Surplus, home of great products, friendly service, and super fast shipping. Links in the description below. Second, we need a laser to create these designs. But not just any laser will do. CO2 lasers and diode lasers are great for cutting and engraving. Like this. This was done on my Glowforge. Also, for cutting acrylic. Like this. This was also done on the Glowforge. So while the CO2 and diode lasers are great for cutting, engraving, making awesome tiles, they don't seem to work really well with the P-Mags, uh, just pretty much turning them into an ooey gooey plastic mess. So specifically you're going to need a fiber, a fiber laser. This is the 20 watt EM Smart One fiber laser. It's one of the lower wattage fiber lasers, but you really don't need a super powerful fiber laser to make awesome engravings on P-Mags. So rather than removing or etching the material as you would with a CO2 or diode laser, the fiber laser goes through at high speed and high heat, basically vaporizing this top layer to get this really nice color underneath. Okay guys, today's subject for our perfect palette P-Mag is this young lady right here. And you could have a perfect palette P-Mag, but you're gonna need some quality vector art. So let's go check some out. Okay guys, I would like some quality vector art for my P-Mags. I'm gonna go out to Vecteezy.com. I actually purchased a subscription to Vecteezy about a week ago. It's about nine bucks a month and really it saves me a lot of time. Um, let's look up mafia girl here and as you can see this is the graphic uh, that I want to work with today. Vecteezy has a lot of, uh, of independent artists that publish a lot of their material out here. The nice thing is is that once you buy a subscription there's no attribution required as far as copyright or anything. I mean I can take this image here I can stick it in print, I can put it on a website, I can put it on a t-shirt, I can chop it up uh, like we're going to do now uh, for the PMAG and I don't have to have any attribution to the creator. The guy that does this or the person that does this, I mean he's, they do a lot of different types of um, graffiti art, I mean there's some Oni masks and things like that, just some really cool stuff. I mean, he's just one of many artists out on Vecteezy. I'll put a link in the description if you guys are interested. It's not sponsored. I'm not sponsored by Vecteezy or anything like that. So uh, it's just something that I chose just to save me some time. So let's go ahead and grab this Mafia Girl. And we're going to go ahead and download it. When these files download, they are actually opened in a or they, they download in a zipped file format so I've got three different files here I've got an EPS uh, graphic I have a JPEG file and the VecTZ license information now what I've done is I've set Adobe Illustrator up to natively open my EPS file so all I really have to do is just double click on that and so now what I'm going to do is I, we're going to zoom into this. What I love about vector art, 
uh, in general is just the fact that you can blow it up to the size of a billboard or shrink it down to the size of a postage stamp and you're really not going to lose any resolution. I mean if you look at some of this just crazy art and there's no issues with zigzaggy lines, jaggedy pixelated lines uh, that you'd normally see with a JPEG or a bitmap. That's what I love about vector art. Now for your fiber laser, especially burning these PMAGs, you are going to have to use some type of vector art that you can import into EasyCAD. So I'm going to show you a simple quick way to modify this vector, or this piece of vector art, turn it into something that uh, EasyCAD can understand and uh, would get you, it's going to give you the, the, the best graphic possible for your PMAG. So the first thing I want to do is I'm not real happy with all this stuff around the graphic. There's, it's to me, it's too busy and I don't want any of this on the PMAG. I just want to isolate the girl here. So how I do that in Adobe Illustrator, I go up and I click my selection tool and I select the vector. And as you can see, it's one solid vector. It's, it's made up of lots of different pieces. If you look over in the layers palette, you'll see it's there's just lots of different compound paths that the graphic is made up, but these items are all grouped together. So what I want to do is I want to bust those up. So how I do that is I right click with my mouse and choose ungroup. So what that does is that expands my ability to go in and delete things like this background. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click the delete key on the keyboard. So now I have a black background. So I want to get rid of the black background. So now I'm left with something that I can use. And everything looks great. I mean, right now you're thinking, well, you know, this is, this is pretty cool. Um, this is going to look great. I can just import it into EasyCAD and I'll be just fine. Well, this is one of the main reasons why people get so frustrated with their vector art. When they'll, they'll download a piece of vector art, everything looks good, they'll move it over into EasyCAD and it looks like garbage. Let me show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm going to save this file. Whenever you're saving files from Illustrator to EasyCAD, what you'll want to do is you'll want to save it as a, an older version of Illustrator because it seems like the older versions, uh, they play a lot nicer uh, than, the, than the new version. So I'm going to put Gangster Girl Test 1 because I've already done a test here. So I'm going to do Gangster Girl Test 1. And as you can see, this Illustrator Options box pops open. You'll want what you'll want to do is click the version drop down, select Illustrator 8. You may get a little bit of a warning down here that is saving in a legacy format. It's going to convert some of the the, uh, the type to point type and blah blah blah. Don't worry about that. Go ahead and click OK. So now I've saved my Gangster Girl Test 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bounce over here into EasyCAD. I'm going to go to File I'm going to import this vector file. And I'm going to go down and I'm going to pull this in. And you look at the file and you think, well, you know, that looks really good. I mean, I I pulled this vector file off the internet. Everything looks fantastic. Now I'm going to go hatch it. Everything's going to be golden. It's going to be awesome. And then this happens. What the heck? Where did everything go? All it is is a giant black blob that you're just going to get you try to print this or try to try to burn this and it's just going to be one black blob so the vector graphic has to be set up in a certain way so that easycad can easily ingest it and give you the best engraving so as you can see here the one of my main issues i can tell you what it is but I'll, we'll, we'll look, there's actually a couple things. Number one, this rose here is going to cause issues. So let me, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to 
make this rose. As you can see, the, there's a fill and then there's a stroke. So the fill is the, the infill of an object. The stroke is the actual line around the object. So what I want to do is I want to turn the, the, the fill of this particular rose, I want to turn it white. So I'm going to go over here to my color palette and turn it white. So now my stroke is uh, not activated. So now, as you can see, it looks great. But again, the issue is this white here. So what we need to do is we need to convert this graphic to make it PMAG compatible in EasyCAD. So how I do this is I select the object. All I did was click my selection tool, draw a box around it, and it is selected. I want to go up to object and click expand. Okay. After I click the expand key, I want to go to my Pathfinder tab. Now, if your Pathfinder is not available, what you'll need to do is go to your window and go down to Pathfinder and make sure that is selected. So after my object is selected, I want to go to my Pathfinder tool and find this what looks like two squares, uh, solid squares on top of the other. This is the merge command. It'll take just a few seconds. And what will happen is the object now is merged into one object, okay? So the next thing you'll want to do from here is you'll want to double click on the object. And what that is going to do is that is going to enter you into the isolation mode. So what this does is basically takes you back into the graphic where you can select individual chunks and pieces and things like that of the graphic. But what we're most interested in is the color is that's the things that we're interested in now is the color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the Y key on my keyboard. That's going to open up my magic wand. And what I want to do, and this is this is dealing with PMAGs, okay? This is specifically for PMAGs. If you were doing this graphic for a cutting board or a piece of steel, uh, you would do this a little bit different. Now, the only difference is you're choosing one color over the other. So for PMAGs, we are going to choose white. Okay? I'm going to escape out of this and we're going to go back. And again, for PMAGs, we are choosing white. If you were choosing if you were if you were burning on a cutting board or a piece of steel, you would choose black. Okay, remember that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose white going up to my select menu item, select inverse. Okay, so now I selected inverse. I click delete on my keyboard. So now as you can see, all the black is gone. So I'm going to go up here, you can double click to get out of the isolation mode and now I want to make sure that everything is set up correctly so how you do that is if you select your image and you look over here you want to make sure for PMAGs only that this infill is white and there is no stroke that is selected infill is white and no stroke is selected so let me take this image and you can see this like the ma her mask uh, part of her ball cap some parts of her hair and the tattoo is transparent if I move it over here on the canvas you'll be able to see it but if I go over here and select let me pick a color because we're gonna go like a tan for the PMAG so as you can see it's kind of a cool tan color so if I were to go and draw a box let's say I'm gonna just draw a black box over here that would represent our PMAG. And then I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna right click and arrange this layer to bring it to the front. And then I'm gonna drag it over on top. So see, look how cool that looks. So 
basically what I did is I took the negative of the of the image and placed it uh, on top of this black square to kind of give you an idea of the uh, what what it looks like on a P mag. But what I've done is we've we've taken the negative of the image because we were actually burning it on a black substrate. So let me get rid of this black square. So it doesn't really matter. I can leave this uh, graphic, this tan color. I can change it back to white. It really doesn't matter. Uh, what I want to do also is before I save this, I want to select everything just to make sure I haven't messed anything up or missed a little piece and go up to your Pathfinder tool again. Go up to Shape Modes and click the Unite. Once you click the Unite button, you'll know for sure that everything is uh, set up exactly like it's supposed to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to File. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Remember, we already saved it once. We, we saved it as an Illustrator 8 file. I'm going to go back to EasyCAD. I'm going to go to File, Import Vector File. I'm going to go down. I'm going to find my Gangster Girl test. And then now, looks the same, right? I mean, it looks the same that we did earlier than when it turned into the black blob. But look at what happens when I hatch this. So now it looks exactly like it's supposed to. It does look like a negative image, but that's exactly what we want. Because remember, we want that this cream color or tan color to be burned into the PMAG. So any part of the transparent part here is going to be the black of the PMAG showing through. All right, let's go back to EasyCAD and I'm going to walk you through some of the parameters for a PMAG. Now granted I am using a 20 watt fiber laser and your mileage is going to vary so you'll want to um, take this with a grain of salt but this is my 20 watt fiber laser. It's an EM smart one. My loop count which basically means how many times the laser will go over this object is set to 2 my speed is 7,500 millimeters per second with a power of 20% and 50 kilohertz as the frequency. My hatch settings, let me back out of here and get rid of the hatch settings. So I'm going to undo this. All right. <clears throat> now my hatch settings, I select my object and I click hatch. I actually have two hatches set up. Hatch one is enabled. Hatch 2 is enabled as well. Of course, Hatch 3 is disabled because this box isn't checked. So my Hatch 1 is set at 45 degrees with a line count of 1 and my line spacing at 0.05 millimeters. My Hatch 2 is set at negative 45 with a line spacing of 0.05 millimeters. Now I could do the same thing uh, by disabling hatch 2 and leave hatch 1 on and do a cross hatch. Basically it would do the same thing, but I like to just kind of keep things separate. That's just a pet peeve of mine. You'll need to make sure also on your hatch type that it's set to a snake pattern on hatch 1 and hatch 2. So I'm going to click OK. And as you can see here, I'm going to zoom in uh, real tight and as you can see how the lines, it almost looks like a screen door, right? I mean, it's like because you have lines that are going at a 45 degree angle and then you have lines coming in the other way at a 45 degree angle, which is a negative 45. So you get this nice uh, crosshatch pattern all the way. And that's what it's going to take because basically we are just vaporizing that colored layer on the PMAG and this is how you have to do that without melting the plastic. So let's head on over to the laser and let's apply this to our PMAG.
you know what a cost of about ten dollars per P mag and about one minute of engraving you can turn around and sell these for twenty five you know thirty five dollars a piece depending on your market just make sure that you abide by all state and federal laws when regards to with regards to the P mags so here's a quick tip on preserving your P mag when you take it out of the package make sure and cut right along the edge like that because what you can do is after you are through burning your P-Mag take a cheapo food saver um, you know if you don't have one of these at the house then you can pick one up I'm sure like at a, uh, a thrift shop uh, the cool thing about it is you take your Take your bag, plop your P-Mag in like so, and then place that in the food saver, and voila! It is hermetically sealed. Yes, the food saver, not just for vegetables anymore. What I really love about the 20 watt fiber laser is its portability. Uh, with this EM Smart laser from Three Plazers, you can remove a couple bolts, it folds down, you can stick it in your car, and you can print these P mags anywhere. Now, for the house, you know, this is a great portable laser to take, and it's a great uh, hobby laser. But, you know, if you are wanting to get serious about your fiber laser, I would suggest, in fact, I am really seriously thinking about getting one is a 50 watt JPT fiber laser and what that's going to get you is that will give you the ability to swap out lenses uh, which gives you a larger surface area to burn it will give you the ability for a rotary attachment so if you're wanting to do some of the cool mugs and it gives you the ability to do really super deep engraving like on coins and knives and guns and things like that you could really turn this into a higher profit business and I'm really seriously thinking about getting one of those bad boys just to have at the house I mean I love this I'd love to be able to take it on the road with something like one of the larger lasers it that's not going to be possible with this one the portable one yeah take it on the road but I'd love to have one at the house one of the 50 watt JPT's in fact my friend Chance Lawson has done some outstanding work with his 50 watt JPT from OMG lasers let's go take a look So what did you think about that? That was pretty crazy. 
I am so wanting one of those JPT lasers from OMG Lasers. In fact, if you are interested in picking up one of these 50 watt JPT lasers, I suggest going out and joining the Fiber Laser Metal Engraving Facebook group. They have over 20,000 members, and the person's name that pops up the most is a gentleman by the name of Richard Zhang. He can set you up with the best deal on a 30 watt, 50 watt MOPA, whatever you'd like in the realm of higher end fiber lasers, he can set you up. Once again, thanks for joining us here on 3D Print Farm. I hope you enjoyed yourself. I know I did. The next episode of 3D Print Farm, we're gonna be taking some fine leather, doing some engraving, doing a little bit of cutting with the laser, and applying it on a baseball hat. We'll see you again next time on 3D Print Farm. Bye now.